they are outrageous. And each and every one of you. Division call, ring the bells, please. Hi, this is Tim from East Metro, and on Tuesday I asked a question of the government about the renewable energy target. We should be moving faster to renewable energy. Uh, I also spoke to the MetroNet motion, which I emphasised the import importance of public transport and that a lot of students are doing it tough and a lot of people on the pension or on low incomes, they're weighing up whether they're going to top up their smart rider or pay their energy bills. And I asked questions around what they're doing down around the Billia wetlands and what they have planned for the future, because a lot of community, community members members are really concerned of what they're doing. So I'm going to continue to ask these questions and continue to find the truth in the matter and see if we can really find out what's going on in the area. For the rest of the week I'll be looking at getting down to Gosnells on Friday afternoon and I'll be out in Bassendine on Saturday morning talking to people about why it's important to be voting green and looking at what we can do to make our community a better place. G'day, Robin Chappell here again. I've um, been doing this for a while now. A fairly interesting week, mainly around questions, not legislation. We ask questions uh, on the Myelin native title claims over islands in the Kimberley. We tabled a petition on behalf of Mr Doherty, the young man who was uh, killed in Kalgoorlie. We've been looking into the water quality issues with uranyl nitrates getting into the water of all the remote communities. And I gave an adjournment on fracking, um, which is really our concerns that the government's process is going to be to a large degree a whitewash. Public participation is very limited. Only one meeting in the Kimberley, only one meeting in Perth, and only one meeting in the Midwest. The people of Carnarvon will miss out. And in fact, if you understand the size of the Kimberley, half of the Kimberley people will miss out. Well, hello everyone. Another week has gone past. Started it out in Bunbury with a Pride Fest and then a rally to let the government know that we didn't want any gas in the southwest. Then in question time, I ask a few questions about collaborative governance and uh, deliberative democracy, getting the community involved. Following that, passed the budget. It was good to have passed the budget. It's not great. It's kind of the budget we had to have because uh, our elections lead both Labour and Liberal to making lots of promises and then they spend the next four years trying to pay for them. So both sides put up five billion dollars in promises and now we've got some of that trickling into the budget. And this weekend I'm heading down to Albany to go to the Albany Agricultural Show. My husband Tony and I will spend both days Friday and Saturday there. We're really looking forward to talk to some sustainable farming operations. We really want to know what's going on there and hear how we can help and make your business thrive. Hi, my name is Alison Simon, member for the North Metropolitan Region and it's been a pretty busy week in Parliament. I've spent most of the week debating the dangerous sex offence legislation. I've also done two member statements, one highlighting the humanitarian crisis on Manus Island that's currently unfolding and I've also done a member statement around the National Redress Scheme and the need to ensure that we get it right here in WA. I've asked a lot of questions but most notably I've asked questions about homelessness services and also about how we're connecting up young people with disability who are in our nursing homes with the NDIS. I've just finished debating uh, disallowance on the ginger up horse beach and as a result the horse beach will be remaining open. I've also debated a number of the reports which has come out from the Joint Standing Committee on the Triple C. In particular the report which has highlighted the travesty uh, that has occurred to Dr Cunningham and his wife Ms Adams. Thanks for listening.